Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at cardiac output and all the factors that contribute to cardiac output. Now, what is cardiac output? Well, simply put, it is the amount of blood that our heart pumps out every minute. Now, in order to calculate this, there's two major factors that are involved. Well, it sort of makes sense to think if we need to calculate how much blood's pumped out per minute, that we need to know how many times the heart beats or pumps in that minute and how much blood the heart ejects every beat or every contraction. These are the two major factors. Now, first one being the heart rate and our heart rate on average is around about 70 beats per minute. And the amount of blood that our heart ejects every beat or every contraction, that's termed the stroke volume. And that's around about 70 mils. Again, this is on average. So if you calculate 70 beats per minute times 70 mils, what you get is your cardiac output in a minute. And that ends up being around about five liters per minute. That's our cardiac output. Now, obviously these values are the average. And for some individuals like athletes, you'll find that their heart rate is significantly lower, can be around about 50 beats per minute. So in order for them to be able to pump out five liters a minute, their stroke volume must be higher, and it is. It can be about 100 mils. And what that means is the heart becomes more efficient, less beats, but with every contraction, more blood is ejected out. Now, if we have a look at all the factors that contribute to these two, heart rate and stroke volume, what you'll find is this. Heart rate being the speed or how many beats per minute, that's influenced by certain hormones in the body and innovation of the body. Predominantly, we're talking about the autonomic nervous system here. We're talking about the rest and digest and the fight or flight system, also known as the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. They can affect the heart rate. But when we look at the stroke volume, the amount of blood ejected every beat, there are three major factors here. One of which is contractility. This is the forceful contraction of the heart. This is about recruiting muscle fibers and the contraction of that heart. Another one is something termed preload. Now, preload has to do with the stretch of the ventricles of the heart just before it contracts, just before it contracts and ejects that blood out. I want you to think about it like this. When we take the heart, if we were to feel the heart, so remember this, when the heart's relaxed, this is called diastole, under diastole, the heart's relaxed and it starts to fill up with blood, all right? Now, at the end of this relaxation point, it's termed end diastolic volume. End diastolic volume is the amount of blood that has filled the heart at the end of relaxation, all right? So basically, it's gonna be the maximum volume of blood in the heart, all right, at any one moment. ESV is end systolic volume. Systole is the contraction of the heart. Therefore, end systolic means right at the end of the contraction. So once the heart is finished contracting, the end systolic volume is the amount of blood left over in the heart after the contraction. So think about it. End diastolic volume, it's at the end of relaxation, the heart is filled up, it's the maximum volume of blood available. Then the heart contracts. When the heart contracts, it's going to eject that blood out. When it ejects that blood out, at the end of that forceful contraction, there's going to be some blood left over in the heart. If you take the maximum volume of blood in the heart and you deduct the amount of blood left over in the heart, you end up getting the value of the stroke volume, which is the amount of blood that has been ejected. Now, contractility, preload and afterload affect end diastolic volume and end systolic volume, and therefore affect the stroke volume. Now, I told you about contractility. That's the forceful contraction of the heart. The harder you contract, the more blood you eject out, okay? Therefore, increased stroke volume. Preload, which is what I was getting to, preload is referring to that stretch during end diastolic filling. So the heart under diastole, so it's relaxing, is filling up. As it fills up, it's stretching the walls of the ventricles. Now at the very end of filling, the ventricles are at its maximum stretch. This is 
preload. And the reason why this is important is because the more you stretch the walls of the ventricles, the more those ventricles will contract back and eject blood out. This is called the Frank Starling mechanism. The Frank Starling mechanism or theory again states that the more you stretch the heart, the greater the heart will contract and eject blood out. Therefore, the greater the stretching or greater the filling, the more blood that will be ejected. So that's what preload is referring to, the stretch on the walls of the ventricles. So if you increase preload, you will increase the amount of blood ejected and therefore increase stroke volume. So increase contractility, increase stroke volume. Increase preload, increase stroke volume. But now we're going to talk about afterload. And afterload's different. When we take a look at this heart again, you filled the heart up. So we've got the end diastolic volume. It's filled up. And we want to eject that blood, let's just say out of the aorta, for example. We need to contract the walls of the ventricles. But there is going to be some resistance experienced in the aorta, in the artery that's going, that blood's going to move through. Now, this resistance can be great or can be minimal. If, for example, somebody has some plaque build up in the walls of that artery, you've narrowed that tube and therefore increased the resistance. Think about it, you put your thumb on the end of a hose, you're increasing the resistance, it's harder for that fluid to move through. Same thing's happening here. That is afterload. Afterload is the resistive forces that this blood or the ventricles need to overcome to eject the blood out. Okay, I'll say that again. Afterload is a resistive force that the ventricular walls need to overcome in their contraction to push that blood out. Therefore, if afterload is higher, stroke volume is usually going to be lower. If afterload is higher, the ventricles need to contract harder. If the ventricles contract harder over time, the muscular wall of the heart gets thicker and that's called hypertrophy. It becomes thicker so it can contract harder to overcome increased afterload. All right, so again, just to quickly run through, cardiac output is heart rate multiplied by the stroke volume, and stroke volume is influenced by contractility, preload, and afterload, which therefore means there are four factors that influence the amount of blood that a heart pumps out per minute. That is heart rate, contractility, preload, and afterload. And that is a quick run through of cardiac output.